All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from, thankfully, a little bit of a sunnier San Diego after all the rain we've had. And today I am delighted to be joined by Clayton Eckhart, who is in Scottsdale, Arizona. How are you doing, Clayton? I'm doing great, John. You got, man, that radio voice is clutch. I'm trying to get to that level where I can also bring the excitement and enjoyment. You got me right. pumped. Good, good. And Clayton is a physical and mental wellness advocate who is dedicating much of his time toward destigmatizing the conversation around mental health. And he also hopes to be able to show individuals the power of mindfulness as he believes it has the power to heal and better manage our own mental health. And that's what we're going to talk to going to talk about today is mental health and uh, uh clayton let's just let's get straight into it uh i i feel that although we've definitely made some progress uh mental health you know people still have a different attitude towards mental health either as maybe the receiver when somebody tells them about it or when you try to tell it, it's like if you have physical ailment, no problem. People are happy to share it and people go, yeah, yeah, that's not your fault. No problem. Yeah, I understand that. But mental, mental health issues, we, don't we just don't seem to approach it the same way. Yeah, no, I think it's a great question. Um, the big thing that I often wonder is, is if I don't really think we know or, or, or ever taught how to address anxiety and depression and when someone comes to us with a mental health struggle um part of that's because some of us were raised to suppress it so we always thought hey mental health struggles are our own problems uh we're responsible ultimately for fixing them not somebody else uh also if we were to bring it to somebody else we may be burdening them so i think a lot of its lack of experience uh is why individuals don't talk about it I think also because maybe individuals in the past have opened up, but they've opened up to the wrong individuals that then turned it and weaponized it against them. Mm -hmm. So then they're less likely to want to talk about it going forward. Uh, I've seen that happen. That's happened to me in my own life. Uh, it can harm you when you open up to the wrong individuals. So I think people, as they are growing up, they, they, they just open up to whoever. And then as we age and we, we start to put the right people around us, we realize, okay, hey, I can have this conversation with this individual because they are emotionally mature enough. Mm -hmm. This individual, I can't have it so much. I think the other thing too, though, is physical ailments. Um, sometimes, not all, always, but are, are more straightforward. So if you break a bone, okay, well, first off, if I tell you I broke a bone, the individual that I'm telling, it's not their, their job to fix it unless I'm talking to my right. orthopedist. Uh, you know, my surgeon, but if, 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 you know, if it's not them, well, then they'll say, Oh, Hey, oh, that's, that sucks. You how would you break it? You know, uh, Oh, what, what's your recovery looking like? There's, they're more straightforward answers though. You break a bone, you gotta, you gotta realign the bone back into place. You gotta give it support so that it can heal and you gotta rest it. You can't wait bare a lot of times. So we know how to fix broken bones. It's relatively straightforward, not all the times, but in most cases, that's not, the case with mental health. I think mental health, it's so, there's so, there, it's so variable and it's very unique to the individual. And so when we bring it to someone, our loved ones or a friend, well, we're bringing it to somebody that's just human like us. They might not specialize it. They're not a therapist or a psychologist. So it's almost like if you brought, you know, if you went to that same person and said, Hey, I just broke my leg. Can you fix it for me? <laughs> They're going to go, uh, well, and they'll probably want to refer you out to somebody, a, a doctor, right? Um, well, I think that's what happens with mm -hmm. mental health when we bring it to right. someone. They go, I'm not an expert at this, so I don't really know how to respond to it. Mm -hmm. And 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 also, I think from from the, as you I mean, I totally agree with that. And then the other part, I think a lot of people feel that saying anything about your mental health uh, is is a sign of weakness that you're going to be perceived differently. Like you've broken leg, you're going to be perceived as somebody with a broken leg. That'll be fixed. Uh, oh, that sucks. You're wearing a boot. But, but mental health, like we certainly perceive that we're, or, or we think we're going to be perceived differently, perhaps as weak, perhaps with a little bit of, of anxiety, maybe a little bit of suspicion because we, the other person sort of doesn't know well, what does that mean? You know, how does that manifest itself, et cetera? Yeah. And it, and it has, there is a stigma around if you display mental health struggles that you may not be emotionally strong. You, you, you suffer from this, this mental weakness. And mm -hmm. that was displayed in my upbringing. Uh, it's, it's, 
you know, there's, there's a lot of other factors that weigh into that. For me, there was this toxic masculinity that was occurring all through like the sports world through football, where there's this alpha male personality, you know, persona that has to be adapted where we're big, strong guys. We're going to run in and be brutes and just beat up everybody. And, you know, that, so that was where there wasn't, you couldn't really marriage the two together. Well, I'm, I'm super physical and I'm beating up on people. So how am I su supposed to also balance these struggles that I have? Well, I, you know, that makes me appear not as physically dominant. So I need to push that away. Um, and that, I think that's where a lot of individuals growing up were told that these are your own issues and get over it. It's in your head. Mm -hmm. And I hate that because it's because when you say it's in your head, yes, these issues are stemming from it. But it, it, what it does is it, it diminishes the severity of it. Oh, it's in your head. Just st don't think about it. It, it. You know, and and I was, I said that at one time when I was, you know, not as, you know, aware as I am now. Is I'm like, oh, you know, I don't struggle with anxiety because I don't think about it. So just stop thinking about it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of a lot of us and society as a whole, we speak from a place of ignorance, not experience. Uh, and I think that's where we need to be more mindful as a, as a whole, that if we don't understand something, it doesn't mean that it's not valid. Um, but a lot of people are invalidated because they talk to individuals that lack the experience, but offer their two cents. And what they end up doing is diminishing that individual and their own struggles. And that person says, well, every time I go and talk about this, I, it's, it's devalued the way that I feel. So I feel worse after I talk to people. So why would I, I'll just yeah. go ahead and suppress this. And hopefully I'll overcome it over time. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good point. Uh, and the other part is, I think, uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in mind-body. And I think that's the other part that people miss, uh, where they think, oh, if you, <clears throat> if you have phys physical ailments, they're divorced from your head. No, they're not. And it's just if you, have, if you have mental issues, they're divorced from your body. They're not. They're both connected and they both manif you know, and they manifest in different ways. And I think that's part of it if people started to see that everything is connected, then perhaps they would view things a little bit differently. Absolutely. And this has been something that I've, again, I'm no expert in any of this. I'm just, I'm just interested. Uh, so I, for me, I'm just an avid learner. Uh, it took me long enough to get to that point, but I have just come across how dopamine, um, you know, this neurotransmitter that, that is responsible for feel, for feeling good, um, how we can, take on we can do certain things such as working out such as going on a run such as um even eating certain foods it'll release the neurotransmitter to create these feel-good uh, emotions and so we are able to physically manipulate um our bodies so that we get an emotional response that's favorable and it's more connected than people think and when you're stressed out that stress releases um the hormone cortisol and then that stress hormone will then start to wear us down. So the more stressed we are, the more of a brain fog we're in, the more tired we are. So, um, and, and there's certain physical stressors in our life that cause that cortisol response. So they are intertwined. It's not just mind or body, it's mind mm -hmm. and body. The two work together and we have more control over both if, we re if we're able to understand how we can kind of work in both sectors to create reactions in the other sector. And and it's interesting just mentioned about dopamine there, and because I think that's becoming even a bigger issue now because they're seeing like kids with their TikToks or whatever, where where they get anxious, and if they don't have their dopamine hit by scrolling through TikToks and and uh, you know Instagrams and all of that kind of thing, so I think these issues of of anxiety uh, are are more pervasive than people actually think. And I don't think people are making the connection that this is this is this is an issue. It it, it is, and and uh, I was just reading about this yesterday as part of um, I was adding in this this section into my book, talking about dopamine, but talking about how our society has been negatively impacted by technology. There's been a lot of benefits as well, sure. but they've seen in some studies that from 2000 to 2015. So yeah, I think. There's a big issue right now with these dopamine hits that now more than ever, um, we are getting a continuous uh, flow of these dopamine hits more so than we ever have. And that's, I think, directly related to technology from what I've re read about. Uh, I thought found this really interesting fact where from uh, from 2000 to 2015, the average attention span has decreased from 12 seconds down to eight seconds. Um, so we are more 
impatient than ever. We want something to quick hit our, those dopamine receptors so that we can feel good as fast as possible. And it makes sense why the most popular apps now all prey on dopamine. They do. TikTok was the first before, sorry, before TikTok was Vine. It was the six second video that blew up, that became so popular. And then what ca came from it was all of these other apps that, that now use the same technology because they realize that if you're constantly feeding people dopamine hits, they're more likely to stick around. And what does that mean for the companies? It means more money in their pockets because if they can keep you on the apps longer, they can put ads in front of you longer, therefore they can bring more money in. So it's set up to be that way. The issue is, is now you have the younger generation that's getting an iPad in their hands at four mm. years old. They're getting these dopamine hits at four or five years old that we weren't getting when I was my age. And so now they're getting used to it sooner. And so our body will adapt to what it's used to. So I'm really curious to see what happens with those individuals in that generation. I mean, talk about, are they going to lack patience? Are they going to lack, because they're so used to instant gratification, how are they going to be able to even get to a place where they can experience delayed gratification. You know, that's yeah. the fear that because we're just trending farther and farther down this rabbit hole. And I can see it on my end. I look at my analytics on my posts that I make with videos, the average watch time is like four seconds, five seconds. And now some of that could also be because maybe I'm not making the most entertaining videos sometimes, but I have to, you have to capture that, that attention within the first few seconds. And that's what all of these apps are designed mm -hmm. to do. Flashy screen, a comment such as you're never going to believe what I'm about to tell you. You got to hook somebody in those first few seconds. Otherwise they lose their interest. Yeah, no, it is. It is. And that is a fascinating thing about the fact that, you know, the kids are, are getting this earlier and earlier and earlier. And then the anxiety that that creates, uh, not just the anxiety, but also I think it, it prevents people from tuning into the world a hundred percent because, you know, how often do you, I mean, I even see with my son's friends and, and people they're never they're never fully engaged really in anything. They're always kind of half engaged because they're on their phone at the same time. So they're and and you know, and sure they go, oh well, yeah, we can multitask. But the fact is, when you're never when you're not ever really truly present, you know, what does that what does that do for your head? Well, to, I mean, you're taught you're just you're really just tiptoeing or talk, you know, touching right on it. When you can't focus fully on one area, then you're not fully present. You're halfway mm -hmm. present, which means you can't give your best effort to whatever it is you're trying to, 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 to work on because there's other things pulling you out. Every time you try to get deeply involved in something, you might get a text message. You might get an email, um, a phone call. I mean, we're more connected than we've ever been. And while that's awesome because we, we have the ability to be more educated than ever, we have more resources than we've ever had as a society and yet, from what I've seen, I don't, I think we're a little bit more educated, but, you know, as far as as much information as we have, we also have a lot of mindless entertainment that is distracting us, pulling us away from, from anything meaningful. But if the more we continue to feed in to allowing ourselves to get pulled out uh, of focusing, then the, we're going to be less likely to be able to do that. Um, our, we have actually, I just saw a study again that I read we've gotten better at multitasking that has happened, but we're, we're becoming worse at focusing. So, um, you know, again, we make these adaptations, but is there a true benefit to multitasking? If you can only give 80% of your effort to something as opposed to a hundred, I mean, me personally, I want to be able to give a hundred percent to that person sitting across the table from me, if I'm on a date or if I'm talking to my friends and family, but you see it now, people are on their phones on dates or they're yeah. at the fam the table and they're in their phones. They're not interacting and we don't realize it. We think that whatever we're interacting with is more important. We're losing interpersonal skills. Mm -hmm. So it's it's scary, but that's where we're headed. And then just uh, the the other part of that is, I think, the feelings of of inadequacy, isolation, anxiety. Because as you say, I mean, we, everything today, the news, right, is not designed to inform you, designed to provoke you, right? Provoke an intense reaction, regardless of which news you, you follow and which area, which side of the spectrum you're on politically. Uh, and then comparison culture, because again, with, uh, with, with uh, you know, TikTok and Instagram and all of those things. And so, and then people, you're seeing people who look like they have fantastic lives and maybe even people you know but but maybe they're not but you're it, it's it's just yeah. exacerbating a feeling of of inadequacy i think in people and and inadequacy 
and that's when you can really impact your that feeling of inadequacy can really impact your mental health. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's that's happened to me. I mean, comparison culture is more rampant than ever. Um, mm-hmm. Before technology, before social media apps, we would still compare, but you might compare to someone in your hometown you know, or, or someone at your gym, uh, for me, you know, I suffer from body dysmorphia. So I was always comparing my body to others, but you know, whereas when I was younger and I wasn't as connected with the, with the web and technology, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was comparing to five or six other people. Well, now, you know, I'm, I'm comparing myself to thousands of individuals. And so that makes you feel even more inadequate when you're like, Oh, I used to think I was just, you know, lesser than five people or not, you know, didn't have as good of a body as five people. Now I have thousands of examples to prove that I have a worse body than, but beyond that, it's, it's also the scary thing is that what you see isn't always what is reality at face value. Now we have these tuning apps. We have, um, you know, people are, are, are changing their pictures. They're morphing them, um, through editing. And so now what you're seeing isn't even reality. It's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's, it's changed up to appeal to an audience, but it's not even realistic. And so, now, yeah, more than ever, we're, we're comparing ourselves to things that might not even be real. And that's scary because we if it's not real, it's not attainable. Then here we are comparing ourselves to something that's not even possible to obtain. Or maybe it's uh, obtained uh, in an illegal way. Uh, mm-hmm. I know this like that takes steroids, but they say they don't take steroids. Well, now yeah. it's like, again, you're, I compare myself to them. I'm like, well, I want, my body doesn't look anything like that. And so, but you know, again, if I didn't have social media, I wouldn't be comparing myself to that guy who's in California right now. That's claiming yeah. this. So uh, it's the, definitely the liver King. <laughs> yeah. And that was, he just came out and finally admitted it after he had gotten caught. Um, mm-hmm. So I still appreciate his apology and, and his willingness to at least, you know, speak the truth. I mean, he did get caught, but at least he came out and, and admitted it and didn't try to, you know, lie about it further. But um, yeah, I mean, he got a lot of people that thought if I eat, you know, or animal organs, I'm going to end up looking like him. And and what happens? The people do it and they don't see the mm-hmm. results. They don't even get close to what he looks like because he was taking a concoction, apparently, from what I heard mm-hmm. uh, of, of illegal substances. And so then they get defeated and then they feel their self-worth nosedives because they think, man, I'm doing all these things and it's not even working. I'm not even close. I'm not even mm-hmm. in the same stadium. So I must just be a failure because it, it, here's this here's the formula for success, and it's not working for me. So if I failed one one more time in my life, well, I guess I'm a failure because I, I just keep failing, and that's the danger. So you know, failure failure is a part of life, but when we yeah. fail and fail and fail, the danger is when we start to view ourselves as a, as a failure. That's mm-hmm. when it gets dangerous. So talk to me a little bit about then um, mindfulness and how you think you can you can leverage mindfulness to maybe overcome some of these things, because to my mind, like mindfulness is going to require you to tune into yourself and your thoughts, which is fantastic. A bit, unfortunately, a bit counterculture right now. It's like, don't tune into your thoughts here. here look at this stupid thing. <laughs> Yeah, well, our society now is all about quick fixes. So everywhere you look, hey, five easy steps to make you a million dollars. Hey, I'll give you uh, a a program. In one month, you'll lose this much pound. It's all about extremes. That's what our society is about. If you look at all the people online that have a ton of followers, a lot of them are have followers because they're doing something extreme. I just saw a video of a guy that was that was um, bench pressing a couch or something at at the gym. And it's like, it got a ton of views, a ton of followers. It's not realistic and it's ridiculous in my eyes. You know what? It's, 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 it's entertaining. So people follow that, but we're in this world of extremes and what I think mindfulness is so powerful in its effect is that it allows us to really just focus in on what we can control. And that's what it's all about is, if we want to create change in our life, first off, we have to be cognizant of the change that we want to create. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing that I see a lot of individuals say, I want to lose weight. Okay. You want to lose weight. Um, you know, how, how do you think you can do that? And they say, well, I guess I'll just, I don't know. Like they don't have a plan in place. Mm -hmm. And that's because I don't think they've taken the time to practice my, can I go about this? The other thing too, though, is, is that we, we, you know, again, we have all these distractions all over the place. We have a, an abundance. We've never had such an abundance of information, an abundance of entertainment. We live in this society of abundance. The problem is, is abundance can lead to a yeah. sense of being overwhelmed. And what do we do when we're overwhelmed? We shut down. We're like, this mm-hmm. is too much. I can't focus on all this. I'm overwhelmed and I'm going to go isolate myself or I'm going to remove that stimulus or whatever it is. So 
again, we have to be mindful of how can we go about creating change without becoming overwhelmed? Mm -hmm. And what I try to tell people is that, you know, you want to work on this convergent thinking mindset. You want to narrow it down to something super specific and small that's realistic. Um, There's an acronym that was called the SMART acronym, and it was about setting goals and how Mm -hmm. to find the most success um, you know, they, they have to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Mm-hmm. And that's incredible. I think I, I use it all the time. If I'm like, you know what, if I want to start eating healthier, some people will say, I got to start eating healthier. I need to change all of my meals. Yes. So three meals a day, I got to change one meals in a week. I'm like, no, don't do that. Make it so that you don't get overwhelmed. Make it realistic. Start with one meal a, a week. Just make one new, me- one good home cooked meal a week. And then the next week do two meals. What will happen is, is by making those small changes, you will, you will be less likely to be overwhelmed. And if you're less likely to be overwhelmed, you're more likely to stick to something. So mm-hmm. I think that's how mindfulness allows you to get to that place. And then when you say, okay, hey, progress is progress. I don't have to yeah. switch up 21 meals in a week. I just have to make a few more meals that are healthier than, they were, than I made mm-hmm. the week prior. And that's progress. Yeah. And, you know, progress, not perfection. That's the other thing like, to, for people. But I agree with you because if, because you were mentioning all the quick fixes and, and, you know, get this in five minutes and, you know, people try all of these things and obviously they fail. So they become used to failing and go, nothing works for me because they, ha- as you say, you, they haven't taken it down to let's make one small change and let's build, build on that, like one step at a time, because obviously, again, you know, that's not what society and the, the popular culture is telling us Ooh, one step at a time no no one massive step from a to z yeah. but i i really agree with you. i think that i think that's the thing that people have to start to do is withdraw withdraw a little bit you know as you say scale down and say here let me make this one change and then let me build upon that because if you make one change one small step you said like even that one healthy meal a week you'll get a sense of satisfaction like oh I've been doing this for a month now. This is pretty good. Maybe I can go to two. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I, I think this is where with the easy five-step programs, they they require drastic changes. And and here's an example of if I if I told you, um, you know, if I if I had the mindset that, hey, I want to practice healthier habits. And so what I what do I do? What do I do? I, I decided to to get to bed earlier, sleep longer. I just I increase my water intake. I change all my nutrition. I go to the gym five days a week. I do all of those things together. And then all of a sudden I experience an energy increase, a mood elevation. And then if someone were to ask me, hey, well, what 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 of those things has worked best for you? What is the one thing that's creating that that increase in energy? I would sit there and go, uh, well, it's got to be one of these five. But then I wouldn't know. Well, then what happens is over time, people can't sustain those five or six things. Life happens. Mm-hmm. People get a yeah. new job. Their focus gets pulled elsewhere. And so they go, I can't maintain these five things. So I'm going to cut out this because I, I think I think I'm seeing my energy level increase um, through these other four things. I'm going to take this one thing out. They take the one thing out. All of a sudden, you know, it maybe they keep the energy level. So they take another one out. Well, then all of a sudden they they're not paying attention to what they're taking out or they might take out three things at a time. And then that's where people get overwhelmed. They go, I can't figure out what it was because I changed five things at once. And so as far as what one thing has led to the biggest increase, I'm not sure. So then people, what they should do is an elimination diet or something where you make small changes, allow implement them for a week or two. And then if you see a change, cool, you know, hey, I changed one thing in my life over the last week or two. It's got to be that that's leading to that energy increase. But if you if you change 10 things, it's a guessing game. Yeah, ab- ab- absolutely. I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. So I think, I think the you know the big takeaway um, from today is to, you know, um, start practicing mindfulness, but but take baby steps. You know, take baby steps and just fix and and give yourself maybe a, a sense of accomplishment from taking a baby step instead of trying to take a massive step and then giving yourself a sense of failure because it didn't work. Um, well, listen, this has been fantastic, uh, Clayton. All of Clayton's information will be below here. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and the the book you're writing. And it's just through my shared experiences. I, I just want people to be able to read it and be able to take a thing or two, if not more, to see how, okay, hey, he's opened up. And the more open he's been, the more he's been able to figure out more about his own health and wellness. And he's been able to make those changes. So 
through sharing my story, I hope that others can then start to create changes in their own lives and change their own narratives. That's the goal. And um, for anything that anyone ever wants to find on me, easiest way to do thing to do is go to my Instagram. It's my name, first and last name, Clayton Ackard. Uh, go there. That's where I put up all my information. Uh, and that's where people can follow me to kind of keep tabs on what I'm doing. Excellent. Well, listen, thanks again, Clayton. Thank you all for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.